Нашли окупанти до нас в Україну Форма новенька воєнні машини Та трохи поплавився їх інвентар Байрактар Байрактар Російські танкісти сховали з кущі Щоб лавтим посьорбати довбані щі Та трохи у чах перегрівся на бар Байрактар Великой страны. Всяке озброєння, різне потужні ракети, машини залізні у нас на всі доводи є коментар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Вони захопити хотіли на зразу, а ми зачаїли на орків образу з російських бандитів. Робить примар. Байрактар. Російська поліція справи заводить, там пивцю рашистів ніяк не знаходить, хто винен, що в нашому полі глухар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Веде пропаганду кремлівський урод, слова пропаганди ковтає народ, тепер нове слово знає цар. Байрактар. 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 Байрактар.
Hello everyone, I'm the Enforcer, and I'm accompanied by Enforcer Matt. And good evening folks, it's Enforcer Matt, and welcome back to Day 7 of the News in Israel, and we're learning of a major airstrike on Iran-backed forces in Iraq, and Israel appears to have struck once again, and this is a big one, and welcome back to everyone. And of course, we're going to be covering the past 30 to 40 minutes of the ongoing conflict that has been continuing today in between Israel and Iran, as we have just gotten breaking news that Israeli forces have conducted even more strikes against the Iranian regime and their backed forces throughout the region. We've been getting some breaking news at the moment, of a major attack that has occurred throughout many major military bases inside of Iraq where Iranian-backed and Iranian-supported forces are currently located. We are getting this and info right now live, much like we were yesterday, and I've seen many people wondering... Where in the world is this news? They're not seeing it anywhere else. We are probably, once again, one of the first people to this news today. I assure you that the mainstream news will get off of their ass and do their job in about an hour, and then they'll be reporting it. But we are here right now and making sure to cover it for all of y'all, considering that it just happened around 20 to 30 minutes ago. But we're going to be getting immediately into the breaking news of what's been going on in this region. We have been hearing that apparently there was once again some uh, expected air activity within the area of western Iraq, possibly showing Israeli forces once again conducting strikes against uh, targets inside of Iran, but not that long after we started to see videos showing that the attacks apparently did not hit or destroy facilities inside of Iran again like they did last night, which we now have additional information on. In fact, we are hearing that apparently they have been striking a, a bases inside of Iraq where uh, Iranian-aligned groups are currently at at the moment. We were able to see that within the city of, and let me make sure I get this correct because I've uh, located it correctly on the map, uh, inside the city of Madain, I believe I'm pr pronouncing that correctly, we were able to see that a large airstrike occurred here and we were able to see that there was a munitions cook-off that was happening at that moment. <laughs> When you see some sporadic air defense fire. And that's the end of the clip. Moving on from that one and into our next clip in the area, we were also able to see uh, some additional information of more strikes that were being reported around the Al Maidan uh, uh, Diyala government inside of Iraq. We were able to get an additional picture here showing the fireball and also the smoke plumes that have been created from the airstrike, once again showing that an airstrike has happened in this area as of just about one hour ago, approximately. We were also able to get some additional information from the area of the uh, Marian strike, where we're able to hear that apparently, according to uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps groups, they claim that eight have been killed so far in the strike against the Iranian-backed PMF base that is inside of Iraq within this area. This is not the only base that has been attacked, according to the information we had coming in right before we went live. We also got to hear that the Kalsu base, just northeast of Baghdad, was also hit as well, and we were able to see some additional video here in this clip. Let me try and get this clip up for y'all. Here's the clip of the Kalsu base that was hit just north of the city. It looks that like is, basically the entire base is on fire from the looks of it. It largely appears to be so. It certainly looks like <clears throat> they've definitely hit most of the base and caused a serious amount of damage. Uh, we've also been able to get some additional footage of a possible another base having a massive explosion occur at it. We have not really been able to get a good geolocation for this. Uh, it says it's in Babel, Iraq, which is the Babylonian government, uh, or the Babylon government, which is just south of Baghdad in this large area here. The capital of the Babylon uh, government of Iraq is actually Hilla right there, but nevertheless we were able to see that somewhere within in this government of Iraq, there was once again a massive explosion at possibly a third military base that has also been stricken just within the last hour. Here's the video of that explosion. It appears to be a critical ammunition explosion. That's the end of that clip, but this is all once again showing that major airstrikes are happening at this very moment throughout the entirety of the area of Iraq, uh, supposedly by Israeli forces, which we'll be getting into uh, the sources in a second and who is saying who is doing what. But moving on to our next little bit of news, we also got to see that Iraqi forces 
uh, of the pop uh, popular mobilization forces, uh, which are uh, supposedly a part of the Iraqi armed forces. We're going to be getting into the background of the popular mobilization, mobilization forces in a minute, but we were nevertheless able to see that a, a larger amount of them are already being brought to the all, um, let's see, the Al Mahalwil uh, General Hospital in the Babylon government. We were believing that this hospital, we have not been able to do the geolocation because we had to get out this news so quickly, is most likely close to the area of Madain uh, that we're seeing here that was stricken a little while ago, but we can already see that they're pulling up to the hospital and apparently are already bringing in wounded. We see people rushing around the vehicles to grab the wounded. And that's the end of the clip. But nevertheless, and also, we... also real quick in Force Show, I do have a piece of breaking news coming out just here. There was some speculation as to who exactly was involved in this airstrike attack on these uh, uh, forces that are Iran backed inside of Iraq. There were some Iranian um, accusations floating around that maybe the U.S. was involved in these strikes as well. But we're hearing from U.S. officials, they're confirming that there is no U.S. military activity in the area and that these airstrikes are conducted by someone, but it's not the USA. So they're not really recognizing the fact that it's probably Israel that did it. It seems to be some confusion about who actually conducted these strikes, but the U.S. is saying that they did not do it. So just another piece of the puzzle to try to un basically figure out what's going on here. It sounds as though out of all the parties that would have possibly struck the uh, popular mobilization forces, it most likely would be the state of Israel that would once again be conducting these strikes. And we will get into, in just a minute, additional news and statements that have been made about who is behind these attacks that have just occurred at the moment. Uh, we also have been able to see that there are some fires near the city of Baghdad, uh, as this was reported. We don't know exactly where these fires were. Once again, geolocation is very difficult due to the lighting in this video and also the caption that was put above the video. So we don't really have a good idea of where this is, but supposedly there is a large fire that is inside of the capital city of Baghdad, according to this video's caption. Here's the clip. I would once again like to remind everyone that this is happening right now while we're live on air. The first strike happened around an hour ago, and at this moment we are once again trying to cover this live. This is not yesterday's news, and I cannot say that enough. This is not yesterday's news of the Israeli attacks that were occurring inside of Iran against Isfahan and maybe a few other small locations. This is entirely brand new news today of attacks that are occurring within the area of Baghdad against Iranian-affiliated groups inside of the Republic of Iraq. This is is brand new news. But moving on from that and into a little bit of information about the bases and the casualties that have been uh, that have occurred inside of Iraq against Iranian affiliated groups it is important to lay out that the popular mobilization forces of Iraq are actually a part of the Iraqi armed forces, an official part and an extension of the Iraqi government itself. They have around 200,000 fighters in this group. But this group is entirely an Iranian-backed paramilitary group. Uh, while it is a branch of the Iraqi armed forces, this is primarily and almost exclusively uh, backed, funded, and supported by the Iranians at this point in time. Meaning that while it is a part of the Iraqi government, it is largely just another paramilitary group that is in support of Iran, much like Hezbollah, Hamas, or the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. This makes the situation extremely difficult because if we do get official confirmation here soon, although we currently have unconfirmed confirmation that it is the Israelis, if we have official confirmation that it is the Israelis, this means that this may put Israel into a large diplomatic quagmire uh, uh, just in a matter of days with the Iraqis. As now that they're conducting strikes against a official part of the Iraqi armed forces, while they may be supported and backed by Iran, this could lead to a diplomatic stand down with the Iraqis and Israel and also start to further complicate the uh, diplomatic situation inside of the Middle East. We have also been able to get some additional news from inside of Iran about who is believed to be behind these attacks. Originally, pro-Iranian sources were claiming that the United States was behind the attacks and were blaming us for conducting the strike. It was then later stated by U.S. officials that the United States has absolutely no involvement whatsoever uh, in the strikes south of Baghdad or north of Baghdad either, and that we are not involved and we do not know who is involved in these strikes at the moment. We then got to also hear also, real quick, Enforcer, before we move on to the next one here, uh, we are getting some more details as to uh, some uh, reported casualty figures in these airstrikes against the PMF base in Iraq. 
So far, the AFP, which is a French-based news organization, is saying one person is confirmed dead uh, in these strikes. Uh, Sky News Arabia is uh, saying that there are multiple dead and wounded. Uh, the pro-Iranian channels are saying there's at least eight wounded, and Al Jazeera is saying three. So the numbers are pretty much wildly across the board right now. Uh, AFP is very reliable, so I would assume that there is certainly one person confirmed dead here, and there's probably a slew of people wounded from these attacks, because we saw in that video that the entire base was on fire, and that was not the only strike that occurred in a, in a target. That was just one of them, uh, which we'll get into in just a moment. And also, we have been able to hear, according to OSINT Defender, and this is our most current update on what the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps is saying, this came out at 5.33 p.m., so that was approximately uh, 30 minutes ago. The channels of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps are already reporting that at least eight members of their popular mobilization forces in Iraq have been killed and dozens have been injured as a result of what is claimed to have been an Israeli airstrike on the Kalsu base in the Babylon government. We will be able to go to the Kalsu base, and let me type that in right here and show you all the Kalsu base. And let me see if I can get this for y'all really quickly. So here is the Kalsu base, as we're seeing it right here inside of the Babylon government. This is uh, incredibly south, uh, well, far south of Baghdad, but also a good amount north of Hilla, which we believe is the regional capital of this uh, government inside of Iraq. But nevertheless, this is the base that we believe to have been hit. Uh, if we were to look around the base and try and find the sites or targets that may have been destroyed, it most likely was some of these larger buildings in the uh, in the base, as these were most likely being used to house some kind of munitions or something similar along those lines. Although the layout of the space is incredibly confusing and appears to be incredibly jumbled as well, with a large amount of hodgepodge, numbers of equipment of different kinds really strewn about, and also buildings built in a very haphazard way. This is the base that we know has been stricken at the moment and is currently on fire and has apparently resulted in, according to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, eight members of the population, uh, popular mobilization forces being killed and dozens have been injured as well, which we also saw some of those injured being transported to the hospital just a moment ago. This is something that is incredibly interesting to hear as this does come on the heel of yesterday's attacks by Israel against the Islamic Republic of Iran directly from their drone forces or missile forces. We still have not gotten exact details and information from the state of Israel about what kind of weapons were involved in that attack and what would have been successful or what really did get through the Iranian air defense, but we were able to hear that around the area of Isfahan, SAM sites were targeted and apparently possibly even destroyed by the Israelis uh, according to the information that we were able to find today. According to a tweet by OSINT Defender, last night's Israeli strike appears to have struck an S-300 PMU-2 service-to-air missile battery and radar site near the Natanz nuclear facility um, in the Isfahan province of Iran. Um, the flaplet en engagement radar and possibly a cheeseboard acquisition radar appear to have both suffered significant damage, with the remainder of the battery being withdrawn from the area. Um, we are going to be able to hopefully try and get a little bit of additional information on this. We can actually see the uh, service-to-air missile battery site right here, and we may be able to get uh, a specific area as well. This is near the Isfahan Air Base, so we can actually go there and check this out, because once again, we do have to remind everyone that the attacks that we're hearing about at this moment are ones that are occurring, and also, correction, we actually have some more breaking news, Matthew. Uh, what do we got? All right, so we are hearing reports from Iranian sources. And remember, this is from Iran, like we say even last night. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but the Iranians are claiming they have witnessed personally on the ground uh, drones flying over Baghdad uh, skies, and they are claiming it's U.S. drones, maybe surveillance drones, and it doesn't appear they're claiming that these drones attacked them, uh, but it seems like obviously there was some sort of fighter jet aircraft that came in and bombed these targets. Um, but they're still alleging that the U.S. had some involvement in a reconnaissance type of uh, capacity. Um, but once again, that is an Iranian claim, and we don't have any backup for that statement. Um, but it is interesting here that it seems like all the sources are reporting uh, drones flying low over the skies. Um, so it could be maybe Israel launching these drones, or it could simply be maybe the U.S. in the area, although I kind of doubt that because the U.S. kind of wants to stay out of this entire situation. Um, but just another piece of the puzzle as well. 
And of course, this is a very uh, weird situation at the moment. We are understanding that the popular uh, the popular mobilization forces of Iraq, an official extension of the Iraqi government uh, or government inside of Iraq, has apparently been hit at the Kalsu base inside of central Iraq, near in well, actually in the Babylon government of the country. And apparently, casualties have been sustained, and massive explosions have occurred within the base. It is believed at the moment that it is most likely the Israeli Air Force once again conducting actions against Iranian affiliated groups uh, but nevertheless the diplomatic repercussions of attacking an official branch of the Iranian government or the Iranian armed forces is unknown at the moment but getting on back into some other news about last night's attack that is leading us to believe that this may be a continued uh, response by the Israelis against Iranian actions conducted against Israel a week ago we do understand that apparently a uh, a service to air missile site the S-300 PMU-2 system that was near the Isfahan air airport was stricken and had its radar systems destroyed last night. These radar systems are incredibly important in making sure that this air defense system can actually see what is coming towards it and be able to attempt an interception. If we go towards the Isfahan airport area, we may be able to find the service to air missile battery somewhere out here in the in the weeds for the most part. Uh, we're looking around at the moment and it's really difficult to find it. Uh, because while we have a pretty clear looking picture here, I can't find anything that looks similar to that on the ground, at least uh, at this moment, as I'm trying to look around and find uh, this specific location. It may be, it's not around this area. Uh, it would be too close to the street. Uh, we would believe it would mostly be somewhere on the eastern side of the airbase, but nevertheless, we still can't really find that at the moment, um, but if I had to take a rough approximation, it's most likely in this area around here on the very eastern side of the airbase. The Israelis did strike this uh, last night, and we are able to get confirmation apparently now, uh, today, through the misinformation and the lack of information uh, that the Iranians and Israelis have been putting out, that apparently the radar installations for that S-300 battery have been knocked out, meaning that that air defense system has been brought completely offline until repl uh, replacement radar systems are found and then integrated into that battery. This, of course, leads us to believe that that attack last night was probably not the end of the response by the Israelis, and the Israelis may be cooking up even a further response, and we're now seeing that response today inside of, of Iraq against Iranian-backed groups such as the Popular Mobilization Forces that were just stricken and destroyed last night. But I believe that Matthew is getting even more breaking news at the moment, and Matthew, what do you got? All right, so we've got an answer to a very big question that we've tried to get answered for basically the last 30 minutes or so. Uh, we're hearing that U.S. officials are now telling PBS News that the explosions at the PMF base in Iraq is believed to have been caused by an Israeli airstrike. So that is the first official statement from U.S. officials that we've gotten confirming that the Israelis are probably the ones who carried out this attack. So it's pretty safe to say at this point that Israel has struck inside of Iraq. They've struck these Iran-backed forces probably as an extension of the attacks we saw last night into Iran, uh, and this is uh, basically a further extension of that retaliation. So, once again, more strikes happening in Iraq this time, which is obviously going to escalate it a little bit further now, but we'll have to see how Iran actually reacts to strikes which are not conducted necessarily on their territory, but nonetheless, these are IRGC-backed forces in Iraq that are being bombed very, very strongly by Israel. Um, so, Enforcer, we have one more piece of news as well. Uh, we're getting confirmation from the Iraqi security sources that there's confirmed one dead and eight wounded uh, targeting the Kalsu base in the Babil Governant. So there is definitely one dead and at least eight wounded. So uh, we have confirmed casualties on the ground as well. And of course, uh, we have now gotten confirmation from U.S. officials for the large part that this is in fact an Israeli airstrike that has been conducted against the popular mobilization forces of Iraq inside of Iraq. It is an Iranian-affiliated group and an Iranian-supported group, but nevertheless an official extension of the Iranian armed forces. This is something that I have to say is incredibly um, precarious and also very dangerous diplomatically as this may actually tip the Iraqis into being supportive of the Iranian government government at the moment uh, in the Iran-Israel conflict or the Iran-Israel proxy war that has been going on for really 38 years at this point if we officially measure it. 
And it now seems as though the Middle East is most likely going to start getting split into two camps. The pro-Israel, or really the pro-Western camp, and the pro-Iranian camp, or more so the pro-Russian uh, camp, considering that the Russians have still not rescinded their official statement of aid and support uh, if Iran was to be attacked. We consider them to be the largest party of that faction, and therefore they take the title of being the Russian side of the conflict inside the Middle East. While on the Western side, at the moment, while the United States isn't directly involved, we do understand that the United States has given security assurances to Israel and may have possibly given security assurances to Saudi Arabia and the UAE just yesterday. So once again, we are going to say that this is the Western side, Israel and all the other Middle Eastern countries of this coalition, and the other side being the Russian side. It is seeming as though things are starting to really go off the handle inside of the Middle East, and war is reaching nearly every country that it can, where Iranian-affiliated groups are currently at at the moment, as the Iranians are still possibly planning, from what we understand, a retaliatory strike in response of Israel's retaliatory strike that was retaliating to the original Iranian strike that occurred a week ago. Um, this is still major breaking news, and we are trying to get as much information and as many updates as we can as possible at the moment live, and really quickly I'm going to be taking a quick look around myself to try and see if we can find and, any additional information. And, and also another thing as well, as we were actually uh, pretty much believing last night that what uh, Israel did to Iran, which was targeting outside of these nuclear facilities near Natanz and also um, the other site as well, which I can't recall the name at the moment, um, we thought that was going to be the extent of the retaliation by Israel uh, on Iran. But as, as we can see today, these forces have been targeted inside of Iraq once again, which I believe that is an extension of last night's attack. And also we did hear this morning uh, that Iran had warned all of their forces to remain on high alert and expect more attacks from Israel. Now, like I said, a continuation of what happened last night. And honestly, I thought that that was probably just Iran, you know, basically stoking fears and also creating some confusion. But it turns out that Israel has actually attacked uh, today once again. So I'm beginning to wonder if we're going to see a multi-day campaign by Israel uh, targeting many other sites as well, perhaps maybe even back into Iran, because Iran is saying they've got all their forces on high alert waiting for another attack on their mainland and their soil. So we'll have to wait and see here. But last night apparently was not the end of it. And at this point, I'm not sure if we can take anyone's word at face value, not Israel or Iran, because there's a lot of confusion and also um, basically disinformation running around so they can confuse use each other and try to get the upper hand. So uh, clearly the, uh, the tensions are very high and this will probably escalate before it de-escalates. And also another thing that we have to note is that now that we have additional information about the Israeli targets or well, the Iranian targets that were hit and destroyed by Israeli forces last night, it is certainly starting to paint a picture that that was not a limited scope of a strike and that that was not the end of it. That is merely the beginning of air actions that are going to most likely be taken by Israel over the next few days. Uh, to explain this reasoning as best I can, at the beginning of most conflicts, the air defense forces or the ground air defense forces of a nation are usually the first ones to be targeted and destroyed along with the air force of that nation as well. From what we understand from news we were able to get from OSINT Defender today and also some geolocation and satellite pictures uh, taken of Iran overnight, we can apparently understand now that a S-300 PMU-2 system had both of its radar positions knocked out overnight, meaning that this S-300 battery is now entirely offline. We understand that the Iranians have a limited number of S-300 or S-300 PMU-2 batteries as a whole, and this means that knocking out a singular S-300 battery is going to drastically improve the air campaign if Israel was to continue an air campaign over the skies of Iran by launching more missiles and bombs at more... Um, more well-protected sites or more military installations, knocking out the air defense is the first priority. That is exactly the same that the, the same thing that the United States did during the Gulf War was to largely knock out air defense systems and then start to pick off the ground forces. And we also understand that that is the exact same thing that the Russian Federation did when launching their invasion of Ukraine in 2022 was to target with the ballistic and cruise missiles all of the radar installations that they knew of inside of Ukraine to knock them out so that they cannot coordinate an air defense as effectively as they would have been able to if those air defense systems stood. The Russians, of course, failed. The United States in the Gulf War uh, went well above and beyond and over succeeded in the ability of knocking out uh, air defense systems, at least as far as the actual war went. And this does appear that while it was a limited strike last night and three missiles were fired, and we do know of two confirmed hits on these two separate radar uh, installations for this S-300 battery, it is certainly showing us that this is most likely going to be leading us into further 
further actions of the Israelis over the next few coming days. And it's also going to be continuously showing that the Iranians will be forced to respond. The Israelis are now openly attacking Iranian-affiliated groups throughout the rest of the Middle East, again, really with no end at this point. In fact, it seems that they're working at a faster pace now than they were before the Iraqi strike was conducted against Israel seven days ago. Uh, so going off of that, it does seem as though things are going to start getting very heated, and it does not ma It does not seem that Israel really even cares either about the fact that these groups are a part of the Iranian armed forces. Uh, it appears that they're going to be striking any Iranian-backed group, no matter if they're an official part of a uh, Middle Eastern government or not, and they're going to be attempting to destroy and knock them out as best they can. But I believe that Matthew has even more breaking news for us as well. Matthew, what do you got? All right, so right now we don't have any other piece of breaking news, but I just wanted to point something out real quick. Uh, if you watched our short war video that came out earlier today, we had given an update on the attack that occurred last night and also the weapons that were allegedly used and where they struck. But also another signal that we pointed out was that all, not all of them, but a lot of major airlines have canceled their flights to Israel um, for the foreseeable future, probably a couple of weeks at least, uh, including United Airlines. We'd seen that earlier today. Um, um, and obviously, with them canceling those flights that far out, that indicates that something is brewing up in the background. And we are aware that airlines are informed by governments and uh, also authorities as well when something is likely to happen because obviously governments don't want these planes flying into a war zone and getting shot down with a bunch of passengers on board. So the airline cancellation of flights and also the uh, airfare type of deal, that signal is a very reliable signal to figure out uh, when, when something's going to happen and also if an escalation is on the horizon. So based on that alone and how many major airlines have canceled flights to Israel, I think it's pretty certain at this point that this is escalating even though Iran tried to basically ignore the attack uh, last night, Israel's not going to let this die down, I don't think, and they're going to keep retaliating against Iran until something probably happens. Um, but in force, I just want to make that point real quick, and also I'm going to do another scan for the breaking news as well and see if we can spot anything. Uh, and also, thank you so much for sharing that. And in the exact same moment, we are getting some news of the ongoing conflict inside of the Gaza Strip against Hamas, another Iranian-backed terrorist organization that is operating out of the area. We have heard that apparently Hamas has no intentions, and let me go and try and get the Hamas update put down here on the map, and then I'll show it to you all here on stream. We are getting an update at the moment, according to the Institute for the Study of War, as well as Critical Threats, that the Hamas Deputy Political Bureau head, Musa Abu Marzouk, said on April 18th that Hamas will not withdraw from ceasefire negotiations or drop its maximalist demands. Marzouk added that Hamas does not know either how many Israeli hostages are dead or alive at this point, possibly showing that a larger number of Israeli hostages that have been held since October 7th, when the conflict first began, may now be dead due to Hamas actions against them while inside of Hamas captivity. Um, this does appear to possibly be showing that Hamas may have been given orders with that kind of a mundane statement made by uh, Marzouk. This may be showing that this is possibly a command that the Iranians given, uh, gave in retaliation of the Israeli strikes to start executing hostages quietly so that way there isn't really much uh, for the Israelis to really negotiate for in return or exchange. Uh, but nevertheless, that is very concerning to hear that the safety of the hostages, the hundreds that are still being held by Hamas, is currently unknown at the moment, and hopefully we will be able to get some more information on that, but that will most likely be in the next few coming days. Uh, we also understand... To give a quick recap to everyone who is coming in just right now, that an Iranian, uh, well, an Iranian base, a part of the Popular Mobilization Force, which is an official part of the Iranian arm, well, the Iraqi armed forces, but also a largely Iranian backed and supported, has been stricken by Israeli forces in the middle of the country. And from what we hear, the numbers are a little bit uh, sporadic, but nearly eight or more casualties have been had. Several are dead, many are wounded, uh, and it appears that the Israelis have now conducted an airstrike directly against against a official part of the Iraqi armed forces that is backed by Iran. This is a massive escalation in the region, as this may directly draw Iraq into the conflict, uh, because we have not seen any attacks ever occur on Iraq directly, at least recently, or at least against uh, official parts of the Iraqi armed forces. This is a very large thing, and I have to say that it looks as though Israel may be attempting to retaliate or even escalate the conflict into a full-on regional war for an excuse to start targeting and destroying the Iranian military at large, but they're attempting to work their way up to that point instead of starting it outright. Many people have had many different opinions on that. 
Some people are saying that Israel is simply retaliating. Some people are saying that Israel is trying to escalate the conflict. But Matthew, what is everyone saying and what are you thinking? All right, so we asked the audience on the poll question, we said, do you think Israel is going to keep escalating attacks on Iran-backed forces until war eventually starts? And when I say war, I mean a major widespread regional war. 45% said yes, Israel is trying to escalate. 30% said no, Israel is simply retaliating. And 15% said it's too early to tell. And based on what we're seeing here, if this is confirmed, like we're hearing from U.S. intelligence, uh, that this was an Israeli attack on Iran-backed forces in Iraq, it sounds like Israel is basically widening the scope of their retaliation. And in my opinion, I'm with the 30%. I think Israel is still simply retaliating, and this is probably going to be a multi-pronged retaliation, uh, uh, basically amongst various forces here, even outside of the Iranian borders. They're going to go after the Iran-backed forces in Iraq as well, and I would not be shocked to see more strikes like this occur probably over the next couple of days. Um, so, like I said, I'm with the 30%. But Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say that I'm with the 30% as well. It does appear that the Israelis are retaliating. It just appears that they're spreading it out over several days and attempting to knock out uh, forces systematically. But I've also seen uh, someone make a contradiction to one of my statements uh, that I made prior on the news, and I'm going to give a quick correction to that. Uh, someone said in the chat that uh, I am incorrect in saying that the Iraqi Armed Forces, an official extension of it, uh, has not been hit in the past before to draw them into one side of the conflict or the other. Someone said that I'm wrong, and the United States did after three U.S. soldiers were killed at Tower 52, I believe it was. Let me make sure I uh, pull it up and get that correct. I believe it was Tower 52 or Tower 22. Let me make sure. Tower 20. So it was the Tower 22 attack at the Antom Garrison perimeter. Um, that is incorrect because the United States conducted a attack with B-1 Lancers against Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps camps inside of Syria and northeastern Iraq. We did not conduct strikes against the official Iraqi armed forces, as that would be a massive step by the United States in taking direct armed action against the Iraqis on an official diplomatic level. Uh, so that information is woefully uh, untrue. We did not attack the Iraqi armed forces in any official extent in the past. We attacked the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps inside of Iraq, which is, an, uh, which is a part of the Iranian armed forces. Uh, but nevertheless, it does appear that many people are believing that Israel is trying to escalate the conflict, while some others are believing that Israel is retaliating. Uh, depending on which way you look at it, you can look at it either way. But nevertheless, I do believe that this is more so of a retaliation um, by the state of Israel against the Islamic Republic of Iran and the attacks that have been sponsored by the Iranians and also been conducted directly by Iran against the state of Israel. Um, this is uh, something that I have to say um, I would have to believe it is most likely 100%. An Israeli attack again today. We have largely confirmation from U.S. sources, according to PBS, that it is. We are seeing that it is an Iranian-affiliated group. We know that the United States has not been directly involved and has also been trying to stay out of involvement in the region. Uh, so we do understand that the attack that has occurred at the moment is most likely entirely Israel's on its own as it continues to retaliate against the Islamic Republic of Iran for conducting an attack on Israel seven days ago, the largest drone and missile attack ever seen in the history of the world. Uh, but but we have been getting some uh, more information, I believe, at the moment. And Matthew, do we have anything new out there right now about the ongoing situation? All right, so doing some more looking here. Like I said earlier, there has been U.S. officials coming out and saying that the U.S. military had no involvement in the strike on Iran, or excuse me, Iraq, and the Iran-backed forces in Iraq whatsoever. The U.S. was not involved with it. And we're also learning as well that the international coalition in the Middle East, which includes the U.S., was also not involved with it as well. So it seems like the U.S. is definitely signaling that this attack was conducted on Israel's, uh, uh, basically, uh, their volition alone. Alone. That was on their part alone that they did this attack. So we're getting once again confirmation that the U.S. was not involved, which does indicate the U.S. is trying to basically tamp down tensions and back out of the situation if you take that at face value. So that's all the news I see at the moment coming out, Enforcers. So I'll keep a lookout, but I believe that is going to be it for the moment. And thank you so much for sharing that breaking news update with us. Uh, and I'll be making sure to give another recap at the moment um, for everyone who is coming in who is brand new to the stream. At the moment, we are understanding that 
as of around one hour and 40 minutes ago, Israeli forces have conducted an airstrike against the popular mobilization forces of Iraq, an Iranian-backed group, uh, in the area of the, uh, I believe the, uh, and let me make sure I get the name correct, because we need to make sure that the name is correct on this. Uh, it is the... Uh, uh, let me, let me just, let me just scroll down there and find it. I'm so sorry, everyone. For some reason, the name is eluding me. I have a really bad headache at the moment. Uh, but nevertheless, it is this base right here, the Kalso base inside of the Babylon government of Iraq that has been stricken by Israeli forces and has led to a large explosion and some fairly high casualties. We do have a video of the large explosion that came from this base, and I believe we have that right and let me make sure, right here. And here's the clip of the massive explosion that came Malibu. from the base. Yo, Ali! 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 Let's try Look and at all a... those secondary explosions as well happening because I think it hits some kind of ammo storage or something like that. There was all kinds of little like uh, mini explosions popping off. And I have to say that is very interesting. Let's watch this explosion again because it looks like we can actually get a lot out of what was possibly hit at this base. Actually, you know what? Even better. We actually have some trees right there. We might be able to tell what street they were on. Uh, so let's see here. There isn't really that many trees in the area, so this is a good sign. They were not on the major highway. It appears that they were possibly on some sort of a dirt road, and in front of them there was a tree line. No, Ali. Let's see. No. Was there a pole anywhere around the curve of this street that we can see you casting a shadow of some sort in the area? Let's see if we can find it. Let's see. I'm not seeing any flag poles or any kind of poles in this area. There's the perimeter of the base right there. So sadly, I believe that we're not going to be able to get a good geolocation on what perspective they were looking at this base from. But nevertheless, it does appear that an explosion occurred somewhere inside the base. We can't really tell if it was centrally in the base or to one of its sides. Uh, but nevertheless, the explosion was massive. We can see it once again right here. Yo, Ali! Shut up. Yo, Ali! Yo, Ali! Yo, Ali! We can see right here, I would have to say that going off of everything that we've seen before, this looks a lot like a service-to-air missile uh, battery explosion, possibly. Maybe showing that, once again, air defense systems within the region are being attacked and destroyed. Uh, once again, we have to say that this is going entirely off of the, uh, the residue of the explosion for the large part that we're seeing here in the video. So we can't confirm that for certain, but we have seen hundreds of surface-to-air missile batteries being hit and destroyed inside of Ukraine. And from what we know, this is largely the way they look whenever an explosion of a surface-to-air missile battery happens. Large chunks of solid propellant will go flying in every direction and will also rapidly catch on fire, burning as they fly through the air, which usually gives all this really distinct firework-looking firework explosion with incredibly hyper-white smoke. This does appear it may once again be some sort of a service-to-air missile system, and this is going to lead us in a second to look into a deep dive on Iraqi air defense systems and find out which one it could have possibly been. That's the end of that clip, and we're now going to be looking into Iraqi armed forces equipment. So let me find that. And let's see here, we have the equipment of the Iraqi Armed Forces. We're going to scroll down really quickly to try and find the air defense systems that are publicly known. Um, and it appears that their uh, their actual ground systems are incredibly ancient. Um, so I'm suspecting... Okay, so here are their anti-aircraft. These are their only anti-aircraft systems. It is either a Bofors 40mm from Sweden, which I'm highly doubting, uh, it's, it could be a, a large amount of Hawk surface-to-air missiles that just blew up, which is much more likely than um, than a 40 millimeter Bofors exploding. It could be uh, Avenger missiles exploding, but you would have to have the all of the man pads, all of the Stinger missiles possible in Iraq in one place to create an explosion like that. Or it could have been possibly a storage of missiles for the few Pantsir S1s that the Iraqis are operating at the moment. Um, that could also be a plausible option as well. The, Israel the Iraqis actually have an incredibly small amount, a wildly small amount actually, of air defense systems. It is woefully small. In fact, they don't really have any long-range air defense to speak of. 
at all, which is very odd, and I can I cannot state this enough how odd that is, considering that most countries in the region, including Iraq, which actually looks kind of a little light on air defense, has a much larger amount of air defense than Iraq has. This may be ruling out the likelihood of an air defense system being hit and destroyed inside of the area, and this may in fact be uh, another kind of a system or other kinds of munitions that have been hit and blown up inside of this camp. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I hope that does address that fairly well about what that explosion may be. But nevertheless, we have some very interesting breaking news that is coming in at this moment. What do we got? All right, so we have a piece of news here that's not necessarily about the attack that's occurring, but it is about some new capability that the U.S. just decided to announce a moment ago. Uh, we're being told by U.S. authorities that the U.S. has reportedly built missiles that can ruin Iran's nuclear facilities, and the United States Air Force has been secretly developing these missiles that have the capability to wreck the electronics of Iranian nuclear facilities using high-power microwaves, and that was reported by U.S. officials today. So, a very interesting timing. I'm sure that's on purpose as well to let Iran know that if they decide to do something, we do have a capability which we've been keeping secret that can knock out their electronics and prevent them from launching any type of nuclear weapon or even operating their nuclear facilities at all. So, a uh, very interesting piece of news as well uh, that we have electronics and missiles that can knock that stuff out without having to cause one single casualty on the ground. So, that seems to give me some reassurance that if Iran was to develop a nuke, we would have a way to potentially stop it uh, if something were to happen unfortunate that Iran decided to do. So, just an interesting piece of news there with that and also interesting timing as well. And also, uh, Magnificent Gaming said, how recent is this news? This news is an hour and 40 minutes old at this point. Um, so it is incredibly fresh. We were able to get on air about 20 minutes after the news came out. Uh, so we are making sure to try and report on this as much as we can, keeping you all up to date on what's going on at the moment. Uh, but from what we understand, the Israelis have now conducted a strike against Iraqi forces uh, inside of Iraq that are backed by Iran. Uh, that, that's a very confusing thing. So let me make sure to try and get this out the best I can. An Iranian-backed group that is supported and funded by Iran that is somehow a part of the armed forces of Iraq has just been attacked by Israel and a large explosion has been seen at a base inside of the Babylon government of Iraq, which is right in between the Tigris and Euphrates River right here. And apparently there has been casualties and deaths that have been caused to this explosion, although the numbers are across the board. We've heard anywhere in between one person being killed, no one being killed, and around eight people being killed so far in this explosion. We still do not know what the explosion was was of uh, uh, what it was inside the base that exploded but nevertheless we are continuing to get some pretty wild information at the moment about these attacks it is brand new however and i do once again want to make sure that everyone knows that this channel runs news that is breaking only we do not cover yesterday's news we will give updates on what happened yesterday but yesterday's news is yesterday's news today's news is today's news uh we have actually gone live today incredibly early outside of our normal broadcasting schedule to make sure to get all of this news out to y'all as it was happening at the moment um, this is brand new. It just happened one hour and 40 minutes ago that another Israeli strike has apparently stricken an Iranian-backed group inside of the Republic of Iraq, uh, and apparently casualties have been sustained. This does once again appear to show that the Israelis may be planning on conducting a multi-day attack on Iranian-backed forces, and a lot of people are believing that this may be the full-on beginning of the regional war. The Iranians will be forced to respond to these attacks that the Israelis are conducting. This is no longer that diplomatic signature gesture that everyone thought that the Israelis had cooked up, like Gordon Ramsay or something like that, where they launch a few missiles that the Iranians supposedly shot down, and everyone goes kumbaya, gets along, and moves on. This doesn't appear to be the case, and it does appear that this may end up being a multi-days-long air campaign against the Islamic Republic of Iran and their groups that are backed within the region. But Matthew, what are you thinking about that, and what is everyone else thinking about that? All right, and we asked the audience the exact question in the poll. We said, do you think Israel will conduct a multi-day, multi-prong attack on Iran-backed forces? And it looks like the majority believe uh, that, yes, more strikes are coming soon, and 73% voted for that option. And it looks like only 11% said, no, Israel is finished uh, as of right now. And in my opinion, based on what we're seeing here, it looks like Israel probably will conduct a multi-pronged attack. Probably today's not the end of it. Uh, I would guess that it's probably going to go on for maybe one or two more days. That is obviously just my speculation on the matter. 
But the fact that they have gone out into Iraq and caused another major escalation, um, which in my opinion is justified, because the, the attack on Iranian territory that occurred last night, while it was an attack that sent a message, and that's what the Israelis also came out and said today, they basically limited their response inside of Iran to send Iran a, a message that they can take out their nuclear, uh, nuclear facilities if they want to, but they simply chose not to do that to avoid a pretty bad situation from breaking out, basically. Um, but the fact that the Israelis are willing to go that far, I think indicates to me that they are willing to drag this on a little bit further to make sure they get the full effect of retaliation on Iran and not just a smaller, limited response that we saw last night. But Enforcer, well, oh man, the lag got you right there at the end, but it's fine. It, it was literally what say you, it, the lag got you. But uh, in my opinion, I believe that this is certainly showing that the Israelis are going to be conducting a multi days long air campaign. I believe that this was a way to try and work around the West's requirement that it not be a massive one uh one time escalation. It appears that they're going to be slowly creating a massive massive escalation over days. Uh, instead, conducting strikes against Iranian affiliated groups. Uh, we have already seen that they're striking groups inside of southern Lebanon. We're now seeing that they're striking groups inside of Iraq as well. And they've also stricken and knocked out an S three hundred surface to air well an S three hundred PM two U uh surface to air missile system inside of Iran near to the Isfahan airport area. This is showing us clearly that the Israelis plan on doing more in the future. A lot of this work appears to be the groundwork. And I'll explain I'll explain a little bit about military procedures and how groundwork begins. For groundwork to begin in a modern Western form, in a modern Western doctrinal form, it usually requires that the Air Force is able to soften up the enemy um, before you start to engage them with ground artillery or long-range ground artillery, then shorter-range ground artillery, and then finally, after the air power, the long-range artillery, and the short-range artillery bombard the enemy forces, and then finally the ground forces, the infantry, the armor, and everything else that supports the infantry, advance onto the enemy and uh, finally destroy them. That is how modern western doctrine works from what we understand at the moment a lot of this appears to be softening up work by the israeli air force we're seeing that in the area of isfahan and i once again want to bring you all around to an update about what had happened last night now that we have a much clearer picture the Israelis knocked out the radar systems that would let an S-300 system operate. The S-300 is a classic Soviet anti-aircraft missile system that is seen throughout a large area of the world. Whenever people hear of the S-300 system, they see this vehicle right here, which is a single um, launch vehicle that is a part of an S-300 battery. Uh, an S-300 battery is made up of multiple vehicles, including these launchers, a generator, a radar system, and many other support vehicles that keep these batteries running day in and day out whenever they're needed what is most important about these systems are these and let me get a bigger picture than that are these kinds of radar systems like the one you're seeing right here that allow for this s300 to be able to pick up air targets coming over the horizon and actually aim and fire their missiles at them the radar installations of the s300 batteries and air defense batteries around the world are the eyes of the system if you knock out the radar the batteries simply the battery can simply Simply no longer fire its missiles because it cannot see the air targets that it's supposed to be firing at. This means that the entire battery, if the radar is hit and destroyed, is taken offline. That is why the West, many Western countries, have developed missiles called anti-radiation missiles as radars emit a certain form of radiation that can be detected and picked up by a certain kind of a sensor. That is why the West has developed and created, especially the United States, the AGM-88 HARM, which is a uh, homing anti-radiation missile. That's what the word or the acronym HARM stands for. This missile will detect the kinds of radiation that is coming off of this radar as it's scanning the skies around Iran and will then travel on its way directly to that radar, hit it and destroy it, knocking it out and knocking out that entire air defense system because it no longer has the eyes it needs to be able to see into the skies and shoot down incoming missiles. From what we understand last night again, and to show this picture, we understand that a 30 in, and let me make sure that we're getting this correct, uh, this is a different radar system for the S-300 PMU-2. Uh, this is not the one that would have been present uh, last night in, Ar in Iran when it was hit. But nevertheless, this is showing us that the Israelis most likely used a very similar kind of anti-radiation missile and destroyed this air defense system. Now, why in the world is that important? 
it is important because, and actually really quickly, we're going to be saving the reason why it's important um, for a second because we actually have more news that just came out about the ongoing situation inside of Iraq. So what do we got, Matthew? All right, so we are getting some breaking news from Sky News Arabia. And also, Enforcer, I'm going to need you to double-check something for me real quick here as well. Uh, Sky News Arabia is saying there's a possibility that Israel will strike the al hashed base in the Babil government. So has that location already been reported as struck, or has it not been struck as of yet? Can you spell that for me really quickly? It's A-L-H-A-S-H-D. Now let's see here. Let me see if I can find that base. Uh, so what I am finding, uh, let me let me type in base. And maybe they'll find it for us. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything about a base inside of the Babylon government. Uh, it looks like this one almost was whatever's called the Falcon military base. It looked like it was almost inside of the Babylon government, but it's not. It's inside of the Baghdad government. Um, so I'm not seeing at the moment anything showing that that base has already been hit right now, according to our information. So that sounds like brand new news. So, and, and also, by the way, that was a translation. So it could be roughly translated as well, because Sky News Arabia posts their news in Arabic. Um, so that is probably the reason for that. But uh, whatever the case is, they're saying, according to this report, that there's a possibility that Israel is going to strike another base there, uh, and it hasn't happened just yet. And obviously, we can't confirm the actual name of the base due to a translation error, um, but that seems to indicate that Israel is not finished yet, and we may even see something else happen, perhaps even tonight and not tomorrow. So uh, obviously, Israel is still on the loose, uh, and they're out for vengeance, uh, very clearly. And it does clearly appear like they are out for vengeance. But getting really quick, uh, quickly back off of our breaking news update on what happened inside of Iran, which is leading us to believe that this is going to be a multi-days-long air campaign, knocking out an air defense system would be entirely pointless if this was a one-off attack that Israel conducted yesterday. They would have been able to strike the targets that they were originally going for and wipe them out, and that would have been it. Uh, the, the air defense systems may have been able to fire... That is, that is unknown. Um, but nevertheless, they would have most likely hit their targets and that would have been the end of things if that's what Israel wanted to do. Instead, they've knocked out an entire air defense system. They've knocked out the eyes for the air defense system to see to be able to shoot down further incoming missiles. That means, going off of that action, the only logical conclusion we could make is that this isn't the end even of Israeli actions directed against Iran, and there most likely will be even further actions taken against Iran, and also more damage caused to military sites inside of Iran, along, as, along with installations inside of Iraq and Syria as well. Because we also got breaking news last night, tying this all together, and once again showing that this is most likely going to be a multi-day-long campaign from what we're finding, that an early war warning system, or more so a radar installation inside of the Sawaita government of southern Syria, was attacked and destroyed. This was an early warning radar battalion, and this is something that once again is showing us that the Israelis are systematically finding and destroying radar installations throughout the Middle East that may be supporting Iranian-backed groups and may give them a heads up if an Israeli attack is on the way or even try and interdict or stop that Israeli attack before it hits its target. That is something that I have to say is, once again, leading us to believe that this is most likely going to be a multi-days-long um, campaign inside the Middle East by Israel, and I would believe that it would be highly likely that an Iranian response to a prolonged air campaign by Israel against Iranian bank groups and Iran itself will most likely lead to a direct Iranian response once again against Israel, making sure that this does remain a regional war, at least from our analysis that we're getting right here on this channel at the moment. But nevertheless, Matthew, what are you thinking about this multi-day-long campaign? Do you really think it will be a multi-day-long campaign? And why do you think that's the case? So me personally, I think it will be the multi-day, multi-pronged attack for uh, a couple of different reasons, actually. Uh, when Israel conducted last night that attack on the uh, Natanz and also, uh, what's, what's the name of the other place? Isfa, Isfa what? Isfahan. What's the, I'm forgetting it. Isfahan. When they conducted those two attacks really close to those nuclear sites last night, a lot of politicians in Israel were upset. They were upset because they believed that attack was not strong enough to send the message to Iran that Israel means business. 
So I think part of the reason why this multi-day attack is probably going to occur is to appease those in Israel that believes a stronger response is probably needed to properly deter Iran. And also, I think generally the public in Israel maybe felt that was not enough, and that's my speculation on the matter on that part. Um, I think that could be why Israel is going farther with this. Me personally, my personal opinion, I think Israel should take this a step further because the attack in Iran did send a strong message. It let the Iranian government know that Israel has the capability to absolutely glass them, but they chose not to. But at the same time, we have to recognize that if Iran had succeeded during their attack on Israel, Iran would have killed a lot of civilians. Um, and the fact they were willing to do that and had that intent means that Israel has to respond and actually get even with them uh, in order to basically appease the people and also to deter Iran. So I think that's pretty much the rationale behind it. Um, and I think it's a good thing they're conducting these further attacks because these proxy forces in Iraq have been causing havoc on Israel over the last couple of months. And quite honestly, they deserve what they get. Uh, and I would have to say that that is a very interesting analysis, Matthew. And I'm also um, trying to see if we have any additional breaking news that's going on at this moment as the information is coming out live. And let me make sure that I'm going around and trying to find the news as it's coming out. Uh, and let's see here. Um, let's see here. I I'm see trying... CENTCOM is saying that, uh, it actually CENTCOM themselves this time is saying that the U.S. was not involved in the airstrikes whatsoever. Also, the coalition tweeted that out themselves as well. So now we have it directly from the source. They are not involved. So Iran is once again trying to paint this propaganda narrative that the U.S. is in there trying to take their country over, which is completely false. Uh, the U.S. doesn't want any involvement in this whatsoever. Uh, and that is very interesting to hear, and it's great to know that CINCOM is once again confirming that the United States is not involved in this attack, as it's gi giving us a far clearer picture at the moment that officially the United States is not involved in any capacity on the attacks against the Islamic Republic of Iran or the attack on Iraq as well. Uh, we can also hear that apparently uh, Israeli fighter chants launched three missiles at an air defense radar site near Isfahan in the overnight strike in Iran, ABC News reports, citing a U.S. official. The official says that the missiles were fired from outside of Iran, and this may correlate with shrapnel found in Iraq this morning thought to be part of a two-stage standoff munition, although this remains unconfirmed. According to the report, the strike was very limited. It says that, according to an initial assessment, the strike took out the radar site, but the assessment has not yet been completed. We are getting additional confirmation here that the radar site of the S-300 PMU-2 system that is inside of Isfahan was once again targeted and destroyed by an Israeli strike last night, and that means that an entire S-300 system in Iran is now offline at the moment with both of its radars knocked out. This leads us to understand that Iranian Armed Forces equipment is most likely something that we need to be paying attention to at the moment because if that was the first thing that Israel did, they're most likely going to be attacking and destroying surface-to-air missile sites even more on into the future. Let me make sure to try and get some information for y'all on that right here and then get that up on screen for every single one of y'all. Um, we also are able to see right here, down here at the bottom of the screen, and I'll be slaying this over to all of y'all, that they have four... S300 PMU2 batteries and four conventional S300 batteries. This means that it is entirely certain that the Israelis are attempting to dismantle Iranian air defenses within the region so that way they can start lo conducting larger strikes within several days. A limited response would not go for a move that would clearly show that they plan on making even larger attacks against Iran on into the near future. Uh, Matthew, I have to say this. This is an incredibly interesting thing. Iran really does have a very limited number of air defense systems. It is unbelievably limited. They only have eight air defense batteries of the S-300 variety to defend the entire country with. That is not They many. do. It's, it's, it's super limited. And like, like Iran even admitted, and also we got other reports to corroborate this as well, during last night's attack that Israel conducted on Iran, they had literally unleashed all of their air defense to try to stop the missiles from coming in, and it was not successful. Unlike Israel, Israel's Iron Dome shot down everything except for a handful of missiles, which hit basically in the middle of nowhere in the desert next to an airfield. So Ar Iran is not very good when it comes to air defense, and I think what you're looking at right here on this list is indicative of how poor their air defense actually is. Um, and, you know, they bring out all the stops and they still can't stop the missiles from coming in their airspace. And that is entirely true. And what's even more interesting is that they were not able to stop uh, the missiles coming in with the air defense system that was based out of Isfahan either. Uh, it does show that it is certain now 
incredibly certain that this strike today is once again leading up most likely to another Israeli strike against Iran in the coming days. Uh, the Israelis are most likely going to want the Iranians blinded as best as they can, or at least have their air defense knocked out entirely before they begin a large air attack against Iran. So I would have to say that while the original statement was that the Israeli response was limited and that's all there was going to be to it, I would actually have to say that going off of today's uh, information and what we've seen at the moment today, it is entirely clear to me that this is in fact not going to be a limited response by Israel. This is going to be a large scale response where they continue to attack and destroy Iranian sites and Iranian military installations throughout the country. I know that many people are saying that that is completely against U.S. sources and official statements. I also have to say, however, that U.S. sources and official statements are not always true or not always accurate. Uh, before yesterday happened and the three Israeli missiles were launched by the Israeli Air Force into Iran, the United States was saying that the attack on Iran would happen after Passover, after April 30th. I said when that statement was made that that had absolutely no logical sense attached to it because usually when you want to attack your enemy, you want them to be off guard and you want to be as soon as possible. And then we saw that that statement, the statement that we made as an analysis of the American official statement on this channel, turned out to be entirely true as the next day after that statement was made, the Israelis ended up attacking Iran, which was yesterday. We are now seeing that the Israelis are attacking um, Iranian-backed groups inside of Iraq today. After the United States said that there would be no more attacks by Israel and that was the end of it. This is incredibly clear. This is leading up to the next attack. Iran may try and retaliate in the meantime and launch an attack of their own against Israel. But at the moment, I am incredibly certain that this is once again not the end and more Israeli strikes will most likely be launched into Iran and knock out more air defense systems. They are going to dismantle, and I will put I, I will not put money on this because I'm not a gambler, but I will put a good amount of faith in this statement right here. You're going to see the Israelis knock out almost nothing but air defense systems over this next week or two weeks, if that's how long it lasts. And then once almost all of the air defense systems in Iran are knocked out, you're going to start seeing that military installations and uh, secure or sensitive sites inside of Iran will most likely start to be targeted and destroyed by the state of Israel uh, after the air defenses are knocked out. Um, but Matthew, I'm understanding that we may be getting a few additional updates on what's going on in the region at the moment. Do we have anything? So I don't see anything at the moment, but one point to add uh, to the point you just made here about the air defense getting knocked out is I had seen some uh, preliminary reports earlier today claiming that the uh, air defense around those nuclear sites in Iran itself, near Natanz and also the other one as well, which I still can't remember for some reason, it's slipping me tonight. Yeah, Isfahan. I, can't, I don't know why I can't remember that. Um, but I'd heard from preliminary reports that Israel had actually knocked out most, if not all, of the air defense around those nuclear facilities with last night's attack. I couldn't really corroborate it, so I did not include it in today's short war summary. But that is the word on the streets, is Iran knocked out the air defense around those nuclear facilities. Uh, so uh, you can believe that if you want. I'm going to personally wait until I see some corroboration of that. I really have not seen it just yet. But Enforcer, have you spotted, uh, spotted anything yourself? Um, I haven't spotted anything at the moment. I'm making sure to take another look around and try and find um, some more additional information. Um, let's see. Uh, according to the North Korean Central News Agency, this is on the other side of the world, North Korea has just launched a test of a novel anti-aircraft missile and a cruise missile warhead at the exact same time, um, just two minutes ago. Uh, we also got to get some additional information um, that, and let me see here that we can find this. Um... It doesn't look like there's a large amount of additional information coming out at the moment. So it appears that things, as they stand right now, are starting to get a little bit more quiet in the region as the attack is now settling and the casualties have already been afflicted by the Israelis. Um, we're continuing to look around a little bit more, and I'm not seeing a lot at the moment. Um, so it appears that the attack may be subsiding at the moment, and the Israeli Air Force has already done their damage for the day against the uh, popular mobilization force inside of Iraq. Uh, so, going off of that, do you have anything extra to add, Matthew? 
Well, I'm actually uh, making a poll right now. I'm about to put it up because I'm seeing a lot of people over the course of this entire stream and even last night. And I'm not going to just write it all off as bots. I think some people actually hold this belief. They're a little bit twisted as to how or who started this escalation, which basically led to this crisis in the Middle East that's going basically out of control at the moment. It's uh, escalating really out of hand right now. Um, I'm going to put some options here in a poll to let everyone weigh in themselves as to who started this escalation. But right now, I'm not seeing anything on my end. Uh, it does appear that maybe it's died down for the moment, like you were saying, but I'm not seeing anything here about that. Uh, also, by the way, in the background, I am trying to keep up with the uh, potential uh, Ukraine aid bill, which is making its way through the House as well. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything on that. I'm not seeing any news on either of those fronts. Uh, so, unfortunately, I'm going to make uh, make this poll and go back to scanning my sources. And I can also see that someone in the chat said, the bias of these speakers is definitely showing. Iran can delete Israel as well. Never underestimate your foe. Were you even here seven days ago when they launched the largest drone and missile attack in the history of the world and all of them almost got shot down except for, like, three missiles? Were you here for that? Because if I'm remembering correctly... Iran fired about 500 air targets or 500 uh, aircraft or air-launched weapons at Israel, and somehow almost all of them, but about five of them, got shot down. Israel launched three missiles at Iran last night, and all three of them got through. Iran does not have the abilities that Israel has. It's very silly. I find that kind of a statement very silly, because that's like saying, oh yeah, you think America's strong? Well, wait until you see the Liberians. They'll starve on you to death. It's like, like they're not the same. Like, Iran and Israel are two completely different countries with two completely different abilities. We're talking about a country that has been sanctioned into oblivion ever since 1979, and still lives in 1979, going up against a country that may as well have space-age technology and is flying UFOs compared to Iran. There is no way in hell that the Iranians are ever going to end up successfully destroying the state of Israel. They already tried to do that seven days ago and ended up failing at that miserably. Uh, so I would have to say uh, that this is most likely not a, not that fair of a statement to make, but nevertheless, uh, we do have to make sure to keep up with things as best we can, and we're going to actually start uh, rounding out this stream so that way we can get on into the major Ukraine war news uh, that has happened, of course, today. Really quickly to clarify this, we do usually run at 10 p.m. Eastern Time a normal Ukraine war news stream, and we will be doing that tonight uh, as best as we can. But I have a small amount of time to prepare for that because I've eaten up a lot of my preparation time running this stream right now. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be answering some questions really quickly. Uh, thanking anyone who has super chatted and supported this channel and help to make it possible. Uh, and then we're going to be rounding out this stream and preparing for our next one today, which will be the Ukraine war news summary of day 786, because we've gotten a large amount of massive news and information today about what's been going on there. So Matthew, take it away. All right, so real quick, we're going to go ahead and address this poll question and then hit our Super Chats and then a couple of live chats. And like the Enforcer said, we'll jump to our Ukraine news at our usual time tonight. So with that, jumping into our poll question here, it says, who do you think started the escalation in the Middle East that led to this crisis? 62% said Iran started it with their proxy attacks on Israel. 26% said uh, Israel started it with their consulate attack. Uh, and that was the Iranian consulate, by the way. And 4% said the United States started it. And one, I can wipe out right off the bat, the U.S. did not start this conflict whatsoever. The U.S. is basically uh, completely out of the scenario at this point. They were never really in it. Um, and in my opinion, very clearly, I think Iran started it with their proxy attacks. Iran has basically been at war with Israel for a long time now. Ever since those proxy attacks have been happening, um, that's basically Iran attacking Israel. But they have a little bit of plausible deniability, a little bit of distance, um, because they have these forces which are Hezbollah and Hamas, which aren't labeled as necessarily Iran itself. So there's a little bit of plausible deniability there, which allows them to get away with it. So I think that Iran definitely started it. That consulate attack was basically revenge by Israel for all the attacks that have been happening happening um, basically since the proxies have been operating, and also that attack that had happened where the uh, terrorists came in on paragliders into Israel and massacred a bunch of people as well. 
But Enforcer, what say you? I would certainly have to say that Iran did start the proxy, uh, did start this entire war with the proxy attacks they conducted against Israel on October 7th because that was the catalyst for everything we've been seeing up till today. If it wasn't for those attacks, Israel would have never struck the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps meeting in Damascus. They also would have not uh, had to have the Iranian retaliatory strike to that happen, and then the Israelis wouldn't have responded against that. So in a large sense, the Iranians are certainly the ones who have started this conflict outright and are currently making sure to try and keep it going as best as they can uh but with that i hope that does address that well and with that on to the next one all right so jumping into our super chat questions our first one is going to go to effed up creations who's a longtime channel hey! viewer who puts in a 100 dollars donation Dang! and thank you very much effed up creations for that massive support he says all these early starts i can hardly keep up lol i'm playing catch up today and keep up the fantastic work guys and i also do have a question for a change whatever happened with glsdbs for ukraine Brown lot small diameter bombs have been in Ukraine for a little bit, uh, for a couple of months, and they have been used. Uh, but generally, that goes against uh, the best way I can explain it. That usually goes against the uh, the claims that some people try and make on YouTube that the West isn't supporting Ukraine with anything new. Uh, and so usually a lot of people haven't reported it. We reported it several times in this channel uh, when ground launch model diameter bombs were confirmed to be used on film. Uh, we've actually covered that for several times now, at least over the past month and a half. Uh, so we can confirm that they are in Ukraine and they are being used. Uh, also, thank you so much for a good question because that is, that is something that hasn't really been covered a lot. We've covered it a little bit on this channel. Um, and also, I got to say, Effed Up Creations, thank you so much for the massive support and really enjoying these streams. This certainly was an early start today, uh, way earlier than normal because we'll actually be going live again in about an hour and a half. Uh, but nevertheless, I got to thank you so much once again for supporting this channel and really enjoying our work. I put a lot of effort and faith into our news reporting and the accuracy of our reporting, and it means a lot to me, a lot to me to know that you really did enjoy it. And so thank you so much once again for that $100 super chat, and thank you for the massive support to help this channel keep on running. Um, also, really quickly to address that, this channel runs ad-free, sponsor-free live streams. The only way that we really support the operations of this live uh, of this live stream and of this YouTube channel as a whole is through uh, Super Chats given by the viewers who find this channel to be worthwhile to support. And so with that, thank you so much once again, and we are on to the next one. All right, and our next one is going to go to Christian Thornton, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Christian, for your support. He says, uh, support hey. the enforcement. Um, and thank you so much for the support and thank you for wanting to support the enforcers. It means a lot to us because you're helping us to keep this thing running and helping it to be possible. So thank you so much, Christian, for wanting to support the enforcer and help this channel to keep on rolling because you're allowing the flag of the Lee Spring Army to continue to fly high over the world and show everyone that we are the best at news reporting there ever is and will continue to be that way. And so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. All right, and our next one goes to Wayne Matthews, who puts in a 20 and says, here's some money for helping with the meds and coffee for this. I think I'll, I'll stick to the coffee. I'm good, but thank you for the support. I, got, I thank you so much for the support, and I also thank you for the meds and coffee support uh, because I actually had to take a little bit of meds in the stream, uh, Advil, uh, because I've actually had a splitting headache the entire time. I hope that it hasn't been noticeable uh, because I've been trying to power through it the best I can. And so thank you so much, Wayne Matthews, for your first Super Chat ever and helping this channel to keep on running because i will make sure to be popping pills and drinking coffee uh to try and keep these things running uh and when i mean when i say pills i mean apple because we're pg on this channel um but still thank you so much once again i hope that does address that the best i can and matthew is going through and deleting these bots i mean geez man <laughs> like there's so many of them uh but with that we are on to the next one thank you so much once again in our next one is going to go to Jocelyn White, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Josh, for your support once again. She says, thank you, and take one from the chat. And thank you so much for enjoying this channel, and thank you so much for the support. Uh, and we will make sure to take one from the live chat. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again. And what do we got for the live chat, Matthew? In the live chat question is going to go to Jason Carpenter, who says, I have a big question. What the hell are the Iranians doing in Iraq? Um, the Iranians are in Iraq, and they've been in Iraq for an incredibly long time, so that way they can try and create a, a chain, uh, pretty much, from Iran to any of their terrorist groups within the area of the northern Middle East, such as uh, Hamas and Hezbollah. That is one of the ways that they conduct that, and for that reason, they have camps uh, throughout the entirety of Iran, Syria, 
And we do not think that there's any in Jordan that we know of publicly. Uh, so it's really just a, a rack in Syria, and they end up funneling a lot of weapons and equipment to Hezbollah that way. So that's why there's camps inside of Iraq. That's also why the Iranians have a lot of heavy involvement there is because there's a decent split. I mean, there's not really, it's not really like half and half in Iraq, but there's a decent split of uh, Shias and Sunnis inside of Iraq uh, or Shiites and Sunnis, whatever you would want to call them. Um, but nevertheless, that does create a little bit of tension in the region and the Iranians play on that uh, and try and support the one side over the other. And that's why the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has camps there. And that's also why the Iranians are able to get a little bit of sway, even in the uh, popular mobilization front, which is a part of the Iraqi armed forces. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does answer that question well. And thank you so much for sponsoring that live chat. And with that, we are on to the next one. And we had a $20 super chat come in from Bryce Varney. And thank you very much, Bryce, for your support. He says, thank you, guys. And thank you so much for the support. And thank you for enjoying this channel. It means a lot to us, and I can't say that enough. And your support helps us to make this thing possible, Bryce. And so thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And thank you for your fifth super chat to this channel in forever. And with that, we are on to the next one. And up next, big shout out to Ivan Barantes, who puts in a $10 donation without a comment. And Ivan, you did not leave us a comment, but I put a like on your super chat. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And also, I love that new feature that YouTube put on there, uh, being able to like super chats. It's kind of different, um, but I put a like on it. But Enforcer, what say you? I got to thank you so much for the support, Ivan. You didn't throw in a comment, but we're always incredibly appreciative of the support. And I thank you so much for that. And with that, we are on to the next one. And we have a $14 super chat from Babylonian who says, sorry, my handle th th threw you off. Oh, he said, sorry, my handle threw you off. He said, uh, you guys are awesome. And at first I thought it was yesterday's news, but it's actually today, LOL. And yes, we never report uh, yesterday's news. That was ridiculous. That would be ridiculous. If y'all ever, I'm so sorry that many people think that we were running yesterday's news. Uh, I, I hate to know that the situation on YouTube is that bad with clickbait. Some people will actually run yesterday's news as today's news to get views. We don't do this on. Uh, we don't do that on this channel. We run entirely today's news. So if there's something raw, breaking, and fresh, we're covering that. We're never covering anything old. Uh, and if there's any video footage that we show that's old, we disclaim that's old, and we're just showing it to show it. Uh, so I thank you so much for the support, Babylonian. And hey, that's okay. Every once in a while, we do get thrown off by a handle here and there, but it's no big deal. And thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. Also, by the way, some interesting news here, by the way. I have um, multiple TVs going in the background, so I'm watching the mainstream news just to see if they're picking up on stuff. And also, I'm watching my other sources as well, as well as my actual human sources. But right now, I am seeing that it looked like CNN was reporting that Israel, CENTCOM, meaning the U.S., and also the coalition are claiming they had no involvement whatsoever in tonight's attack which basically throws the entire situation on its head if that reporting is accurate by CNN, and I did read that correctly, which I, it appears I did. Um, if Israel was not involved in that, then that opens the possibility of maybe a false flag attack uh, to create an escalation that basically allows forces to uh, escalate the situation without a real basis. It could have been maybe Iran that did it, or perhaps maybe even a foreign power such as Russia that wants things to escalate. Um, but once again, I'm going to wait for more information on that, because even though it looked like CNN was reporting that, from what I could tell, take it with a grain of salt, because I need more confirmation, um, that would definitely change the situation quite a bit. But Enforcer, what say you? That is incredibly interesting. And just for the sake of trying to keep this on um, on par with our title, I'm going to be changing this title to Massive uh, Strikes on Iranian Bases in Iraq. Uh, so with that, I hope that does address that well. That's very interesting to hear and a, uh, a very interesting development. And we'll be seeing if that can be corroborated or confirmed a little bit later. Uh, and with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and the next one is going to go to Cody D362, who puts in a 10. It says, Slav Ukraine and Yam Israel Chai. And Slavo Ukraini and Yam Israel Chai, and thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel to keep on rolling. Because if it wasn't for folks like you, we wouldn't be able to make this thing possible. And so with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Heather Fitzgibbon LSA, who puts in a $10 donation. And thank you very much, Heather, for your support and hey. not leaving a comment. But of course, of course, Heather, we appreciate it very much. And Enforcer, what say you? And I got to thank you so much for the support, Heather Fitzgibbon. Just like Matthew said, you didn't throw in a comment, but the support is greatly appreciated. And so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. 
You know, next, we have a 10 from Sahat Hassan, who says, Iran sent 100 drones to overwhelm air defense systems, cruise missiles used to locate the air defense locations, and the Israel, uh, USA, and UK couldn't stop the ballistic missiles, though. Billions in defense used. Um, I thank you for the support, but that's actually untrue. Um, the Iranians launched over 100 ballistic missiles, according to U.S. sources, and most, if not all, of those missiles were shot down before they made it into Israel. Out of all of those missiles, around 100 of them, only 5 of them made it to their targets, meaning that they had a 5% success rate. We also understand that a large amount of those failed and crashed inside of Iraq after launch, or even crashed inside of Iran right after launch due to critical failure of the system. Um, so with that, I thank you for the support, and with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and also real quick, I was uh, looking here. Let's see here. I saw trademarks and patents by Thrash Law, and also it's been a long time since we've seen you, by the way. It's good to hey! see you once again. He put in something very interesting in the live chat. He said, in reference to the U.S. statement about those uh, new weapons they've announced today, he says that could indicate that maybe the U.S. has detected movement of Iran's hot weapons, such as perhaps the nuclear weapons, um, which maybe triggered that. And that is a good point, by the way. I, po I wanted to point that out because that actually is a pretty good observation and analysis here. Uh, for the uh, United States to come out and say that, um, there was obviously some motivation or reason behind them saying that. And it could be that maybe they've detected something like this uh, that caused them to say it. But I just want to say that real quick. And Enforcer, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I do not think so. And thank you so, so much, Trademarks and Patents, for sharing that with us. And with that, we are on to the next one. And up next, a big shout out to Junebug who puts in an 8, Keymaster who puts in a 5, along with Jason Carpenter, Tommy Manic, and Craig Alex. And a huge shout out to all five of you for that support. And sadly, no comments to address on any of those, but we appreciate y'all very much. And we also have a 5 from Doomsday Games, who says, With air defense gone, do you think more stripes will occur on all Iranian-backed militias and troops, regardless of the region? Yes, I think so. I think that we're probably going to be seeing a lot more uh, elevated levels of attacks over the next few days, maybe even the next few weeks, until this goes into a full-blown regional war. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does uh, address that incredibly well, and thank you so much once again for the support. And with that, we are on to the next one. And also we have a two from Keith Bonner, uh, who says, uh, share, or he says, here are the new subs Israel just received, he said. And thank you so much for the support and sharing that with us. Uh, we would look into them a little bit, but sadly, we're really pressed for time because I have to try and prepare for the Ukraine war news segment, and I have almost no time to do that right now. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that the best I can. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and we have only four Super Chat questions left to cover before we're going to round this one out and get ready to prepare for our Ukraine news. This one goes to Jane, who puts in a two, and says, No involvement except billions of U.S. dollars. Um, that's always how it is uh, in every corner of the world. I thank you for the support. Uh, but that's like saying, um, you know, you, you get an omelet without breaking. Well, look, we got an omelet, but we broke eggs. That's how you get omelets. You break eggs and cook them. Um, so I thank you for the support. And with that, we are on to the next one. The next one goes to ZG, who puts in a five. It says, are you the guy from Tau Fled Ramos? Uh, I don't think so. Last I checked, I was <laughs> not, but still, thank you so much for the support. I hope that does uh, address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. This one goes to Gassed Up TV, who puts in a five and says, Not much, but just trying to do my uh, part to keep up the good work. And thank you very much, Gassed Up TV. It's very much appreciated. And it is really appreciated, Gassed Up TV. And thank you so much once again. And with that, we are on to the next one. And finally, we have a $2 super chat from Uncovered Cube, who said, Just wanted to say LSA. And thank you so much, Uncovered Cube. And of course, LSA and long live the Lee Spring Army. And with that, I hope that does uh, address that fairly well. Uh, and oh man, you had to get that one. I never seen them before. You went from reporting without bias to bias. Like, I never even seen you. Um, but with that, I hope that does address that well, Uncovered Cube. Thank you so much once again for support. And with that, it is time for us to answer uh, one, uh, well, actually two live chat questions because we always have to make sure to get a couple of live chats. And then we're going to be rounding out the stream and then getting ready for the next one which will be going live at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And so, Matthew, uh, wait, we actually have a $5 super chat from Bruce Lee that says, I just monitored TV settings to warm to help with eye strain, help with headaches since you're getting a lot of screen time lately. Also drink water. I'm drinking a lot of water, and I will possibly look into adjusting the screen settings. And so thank you so much once again, Bruce Lee. And with that, we are on to our final question of this uh, stream. And so with that, who is the last person to throw in the lucky last question of the stream? 
And that viewer is Avari Mandibratis. He says, Enforcer, what has been described by the U.S. today is an EMP, and so the U.S. has found a way to produce EMPs in mass uh, without a nuclear detonation. And does and does that sound correct to you? That sounds largely correct. Uh, we may have to look into that a little bit more, or it may be something completely different than an EMP. It has an EMP-like effect, but it doesn't operate on the normal electromagnetic pulse kind of a concept, uh, perhaps, maybe. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. And thank you so much uh, to Joshua Thompson for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. Thank you for the five. Uh, sadly, we cannot uh, read that uh, because we are very pressed for time and we have to get on into preparing for the next stream coming up in about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes. And so with that, that is the end of this stream. But I will see you all all uh, in just a little bit, in an hour and 20 minutes at 10 p.m. Eastern time to cover the Ukraine war news on day 786. We have to get this map prepared for tonight. Uh, and so with that, good uh, good night. Well, well, actually, I don't even know why I'm going through that normal <laughs> intro. I will see you all in an hour and 20 minutes. Take care. Long live the East Spring Army. And I'll see you all in just a little bit. All right, and we'll also see you all in just a moment. And we have some pretty big Ukraine news to cover as well tonight. So be sure to join us in about an hour and 10, 15 minutes or so. And be sure to join us then. And we'll see you at that point. So bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm. Yes.